let us read uh, Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Oh God, we are talking about loving the Lord. Loving the Lord, loving the Lord. December, our month to love the Lord. Media team, please give me Psalms 91. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Please read. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Continue. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Amen. And because he has set his love upon me, so I will love him. I will, a long life, I will satisfy him. Just because he has set his love for me. That is God speaking to, about David. Because he has set, give me verse 14 again. Uh -huh, give me a verse. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name. Uh -huh, continue. Because he has known he shall call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. So today, I like shared with you last Sunday, that today we are going to continue with this understanding of loving the Lord and my main text today will be or the main title today will be the prophets of loving the Lord why are we why should we love the Lord why are we lovers amen why should we should we be lovers of God ask your neighbor why should we be lovers of God eh you know, sometimes we are surrounded by the good things around us, good people around us, and we fail to know the center of everything is loving the Lord. You know, God can bless you with a beautiful family. God can bless you with there. Your parents are there for you. Your sisters, your, if you're married, your spouse is there for you. In your workplace, you have beautiful relationship, girlfriend, boyfriend thing, colleague relationship. And besides, there are other great blessings around you that we end up uh, missing out on what is the center of all this. Is just loving the Lord. Amen. And I don't want to go ahead of myself. But I need us to know that uh, why the scriptures insist and are pushing us that we shall love the Lord with all of our heart, with all our strength, is because there is a profit of loving the Lord. So, before I continue on the profits of loving the Lord, I will start with five S uh, summary of a true lover of God. Uh, remember last Sunday I shared 20 characters of a uh, lover of God. I have summarized them into five points. That I uh, will be proof of a genuine love for God. Amen. Are we together church? Are we together? I want to give you five points. That will be a summary of a true lover of God. Last Sunday I shared 20 points. So these five a true lover of God, a genuine lover of God. These five points must be in place. The first one is obeying his word. A true lover of God will obey the word of God according to John 14, 30. Obeying his word, obeying his word. I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. Are you sure that is the scripture? John 14, 30, is that John 14, 30? I must have misquoted it. Verse 21, give me verse 21. He who has my commandment and keeps them it is he who loves me that is the one i think i must have uh, misquoted but i mean verse 21 yes he who has my command my commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me so according to john 14 21 
genuine lover of God will obey the word of God. Hallelujah. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Yes, that manifest myself to him is now what we are going to be talking about, the profits of being a lover of God. Amen. God manifesting himself to you. Amen. And so, number one, like I say, is obeying the word of God. Number two is a person who pleasure God with their lives. If you are a true lover of God, your life will be to the pleasure of God. Let's get to Luke 3.22. I want you to hear about Jesus. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And the voice came from heaven and said, You are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. This is the words of our Lord, our God to Jesus. That I am well pleased with you, Jesus. I am well pleased with you. Therefore, a true lover will pleasure God with your life. I have a question for you, child of God. A lover of God you are today. Can you say your life pleasure God? Can you say your life glorify God? Can you say that how you present him everywhere you are? In your conduct, in your fashion, in everything you do, in what you say, in your service. Can you say it is a pleasure to God? God, or it is to your satisfaction. Is God happy with you? A true lover will pleasure God with their lives. A true lover of God will obey the commandments. Number three, a true lover will spend time with God. A true lover will spend time with God. Need you to see Luke 6, 12, that Jesus all night spending with God. Remember, he is pleased already. Jesus, his life pleased the Lord. And we see him spending an entire night in prayer. Now it came to pass in those days that he went out in the mountain to pray. He continued all night, all night, all night in prayer to God. A true lover of God, we spend time. To be with God. Ask yourself. Don't ask your neighbor. How long do you spend to be with God? If you truly love him. Are you limited? Are you those people you are spending time with God. You are still on phone. You are still checking time. You are still feeling. Hey, time me Menda. And you are with God in prayer. You are with God in worship. A true lover of God. We spend ample time with God. God gave me a chance uh, to fall in love. And I know I'm not the only culprit here. <laughs> and I remember we would spend time to talk, to talk, to talk. Safaricom would let us down. We'll get to Airtel. Eh? We are still talking. Sometimes we are in the uh, we are in that place where now you have to disconnect disconnect yourself disconnect i'm not disconnecting mm, i'm missing you eh because i was in love hallelujah a true lover will spend time with god if genuinely child of god here you love god there must be a proof of it you spend time your moment of praise, your most precious moment. You will not be engaged by anything. You just want to be with the Lord. You just want to be there. I tell God, I just love you. I just love you. I just love you. This, uh, this message, you just forgive me. I'm, it really makes me emotional. Every time I talk about the love of God, I can't stop crying. Because it just touches me as a person. I it all the time ask. Uh, it is those things you are sharing at the same time they are, they are speaking to you at the same moment oh, God I love you I want to spend time with you and the rest of my life a true lover will not be distracted by anything else in their moment with God they just want to be with the Lord they just want to 
hung there. Love him. Things are not in place. They have been thrown out of the house. And this has happened. And the other has happened. But a true lover will be loved. I love you. May not understand what is going on. But I just love you. Buena sifiwe. And you are there. You are hanging there. You understand? You remember John 20 about Mary? I read for you last Sunday. She was a true lover of God. Can you imagine that woman, Pastor Edward, knew Jesus has been crucified and he's dead. But can you imagine she went at the graveyard early in the morning? She was there, Master. My master is gone. But I'm concerned. Where have they kept his body? A true lover. A true lover. Even in death. Can you imagine Minister Eva, a woman at the graveyard, early in the morning? Hi, yeah, yeah. Every time I read that verse, it, I am like, Lord, I'm coming, I'm still coming to say I love you. Hallelujah. Ask yourself, how much time do you spend to be with God? My Lord. Oh, she mekanda mazita madazaya. Mary was there. She knew master. her master was taken. But imagine, she couldn't. She could not be stopped. She didn't care what people would think about her. A woman at the graveyard early in the morning. But she was a true lover. She loved the Lord dearly. She didn't care that Jesus would not even notice because she was, he was dead. But because she was a true lover. Wow, she found us at the graveyard early in the morning. Church, I have a question for you. How much time can you say you are spending with God? Things are not in place, but you are a true lover of God. You are there. I don't know where they have taken my master. No, my master is dead, but I'm concerned where they have kept the body. I love him that much. True lovers church would want to spend time with God. And even if time, I mean things are not as they had thought. But they are there, they are hanging there. Buona sifiwe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you say you are spending time with him? As a true lover of God. Can you say that you are located time to just have a moment with him? Can you say that you have a sign moment just to be with your love? Oh God, help us. Oh Jesus, number four. A true lover of God will serve God passionately. Passionately. They cannot be controlled. I mean, they, will, they are compelled to serve him. A true lover of God will be concerned that the house of God need to be in place. The house of God need to be in place. A true lover would want to see people giving their lives to Jesus. A true lover will not have an issue going to Lycipia for the gospel of Jesus Christ. A true lover will not have an issue to serve God, whether it is in giving, whether it is with their muscles, whether it is in their strength, in their money, in anything. They will be there to love the Lord. Passionately by serving him. I was listening to a message by Pastor Paul in ancient and he said he loved God so much at some point he was crying to God, Lord, I wish you could divide me. I can be in the choir. I can be in this nation. I can evangelize. I can do this. I can do the other. Can you imagine what a prayer? He felt inadequate because he couldn't be everywhere. But we know the man of God, some of us, we know him. Pastor Paul Enenche, he said, God, will you just divide me? My hand is the other end, my head is this other side, my legs. My God, a true lover would want to serve the Lord. Number five, by giving and sacrifice. A true lover will not mind whatever it takes to sacrifice. That will be ready to, to sacrifice anything for their master. Because they love him like Mary. My God, she's risked her life to be at the graveyard 
because she was a true lover. A true lover will be giving and sacrificing. <coughs> Let's read First Kings 3, 3. Please read. First Kings 3, 3 and verse 4 also. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father David, except that he sacrificed and burned incense at the high places. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that yeah. was the great high place. Mm -hmm. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. And the story continues. We know, of course, before he messed up, before the love of God left him to do the crazy thing he did, Solomon loved the Lord. He loved, if the Bible would indicate that he loved the Lord, he was a lover of God. In the next verse, we see his sacrifice. Can you imagine someone offering a thousand burnt offerings? Pastor Samson will come here one of these days and tell us how long it took <laughs> to have a thousand bull sac sacrifice at the altar. Wow! But he was a true lover. I want you to picture a thousand bulls. A thousand. And we all know Sac the sacrifice we are talking about is slaughtering the process. It took long. It, it, there was no way it took, a, a, I don't know how long, but it must have taken a couple of days. Killing, slaughtering a thousand bulls. I need to go and probably find out in the butcheries around. How many bulls do you, do you slaughter in a day? Maybe to get the picture, but the truth of the matter, even in our own visual, vision, visualizing, we can tell that was not a small thing. But the Bible says he loved the Lord, verse 4, he sacrificed. If uh, you are a true lover, you will never have a problem in sacrificing. All the time, if there is any opportunity, if it's, uh, the food drive is here, I am sacrificing. I will also participate. If it is going to like keep your arms still there, I am a lover of God. I give myself for the Lord. The five points I mentioned are the proofs of a true lover. And you remember the 20 I shared last Sunday. And so here we are today. If truly you are following in the five summary I gave of a true lover true lover you are now qualifying to see the profit of loving the Lord tell your neighbor now profits of loving the Lord uh -huh. you have been giving sacrificially you have been there to obey the word of God. You have been serving God passionately. You have been spending time with God. You have been pleasuring God with your life. You have been obeying his commandments. Now you are going to see the prophets. Because the prophets of being a lover of God are too amazing. They are too amazing. We start our first reading in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 10. 1 Corinthians 2. 9 to 10, please read. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Mm -hmm. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. As it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. Are you ready to hear? The things that God has prepared for them that love him. No wonder the devil is pushing us not to be lovers of God. Because the Bible is saying that there is no even ear that has heard. There is no eye that has seen. Neither has it entered into the heart of a man. It, meaning, even now, it is still a wonder what God can do to his lovers. We will never live to understand what God he will able to do to his lovers. Hey, my God today in this service, may somebody graduate and say, Lord, I want to be your lover for life. I will never, never 
allow anything to come between me and you. You have blessed me. You will, have, you will bless me. You have blessed me. Whichever stages I will be, I will stay there as a lover of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you ready to begin to understand? We will de definitely, even in this, in this service, we will not understand it. Because it is already written. That there is no eye that has seen. There is no ear that has heard. And it has also not entered into the heart of, the ma of any man. The things which God can do to unprepared for them that love him. Manama shekandaya. Oh, I just want to be a lover of God. If, it, if, if to date, we still don't know what God can do to his lovers, I would rather love him. Amen. Number one, unfathomable glory of God. Unfathomable glory of God. That means uh, that as a lover of God, the first thing you will begin to experience is the unexplainable glory of God upon your life. That because you've loved God passionately, you have been wasted for Jesus. That not, uh, the things, the glory God releases upon your life, I'm telling you, you cannot be able to explain because you will be sometimes uh, in a situation, in any where you are because of the love you have for God God pours his glory in your life and just people looking at you your life reflects God's glory your life reveals him reveals God I've gone to places church and uh, I, 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 and someone is like uh, I, there's just something about you there's just something remember we were with a team in Marsabet and um the person we were together, they were asking, I, I feel like you don't like to talk or you don't like this conversation. <laughs> Throughout the journey, of course, Marsabet is many hours drive. <clears throat> I was seated next to them and I was engaged in my own business, in my singing, my thing with my God throughout the journey. And when we were there in the mission, so towards the third day or thereabout, he, was, he called me aside, he said, Either you're not interested with our conversation or there's just something I, I am yet to understand about you. I said, no, I'm, I'm not like, not interested with your conversation. But I don't know, I cannot be able to flow with what you're talking about. Because sometimes I find myself lost and my life just begin to emit God's glory. Child of God, as you graduate, as you get into the business of loving God, I promise you your life will reflect the glory of God. Your life will reflect his glory. Even in the midst of tough journeys, even in the midst of fire, even if you are thrown in the den of lions, as a, child, as a lover of God, I promise you, you will be Red in there by God's glory. No wonder, no wonder Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were thrown at the fire, three of them, God had to join them because his glory was seen even in the fire. Today I want you to know, a lover of God, I'm speaking to you now. It doesn't matter the things you may have to journey. Maybe an issue in your marriage, an issue with your finances, an issue with your life. But you stay there as a lover of God. Even when people are like you are confused, you are like who you are hated, you are cast, your water. Your life will still reflect the glory of God. People will see God even in your in the slums. You are in the slum, but God, people will see, look at you. You are not like us. You are not like us. You are not like us. Your life is different. Your life is different. Something may have come as happened, and maybe they can see the situation, but they can look at you and they say, What? You're not even crying. Yes. They can't just see God's glory. Lover of God today, please 
Don't be deceived by the enemy to get out of your love affair with God. Stay there. You are a lover of God. We reflect God's glory. And all things will work together for good to the lovers of God. That broken marriage will work together for your good. Pain of losing parents will work together for your good. Pain of losing a spouse will work together for your good. Pain and the situation of joblessness will work together for good. God for only the lovers of God. Right now, my life may not be in place. You're asking me, why am I not married? You're asking me, why are you not driving? You're asking me questions. Why am I thrown out of the house? You stay there. Child of God as a lover. Oh, I wish somebody would hear God today. Stay there as a lover of God. Watch this person. Your life will glorify the Lord. God's glory will be seen in your waiting. Oh, you, my daughters, in your singlehood. It may have been a long wait. You are now 40 something. But let me tell you, in your 40 something, in you as a single girl, as long as you're a lover of God, God's glory will be seen. Shanda Makaya, he told him, my God. Let your glory be seen. Let me give you one minute. Every one of you, bow your head and begin to speak to God. Because I see in the spirit, we all have different journeys. Some of us, we are battling with serious issues and we are wondering, how can I come out of this situation? And the first deception, the enemy has placed in your heart. You are considering to backslide. You are considering to love somebody else. Or to Hey, this minute I want you to speak to God. Whatever it is you're about to speak to God. You know yourself you're a lover of God. Tell God, Lord, in my pain, let your glory be seen. My Lord, I know me, I love you. I love you, I love you. In my joblessness, Lord, let me experience your glory. I am your lover, Lord. In my issue, in my mind, in my singlehood, that issue, the loss I went through in my business, Lord, the pain of losing someone, my father, my God, let your glory, let your glory be seen according to oh, the word of God in First Corinthians 2.9, that even there's no eye that has seen no ear has heard, <coughs> neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Today, church, if you are here, you had considered to walk out of being a lover of God, drop it, drop it. That painful and embarrassing situation. Child of God, God is going to use it. It shall glorify God. Stay there as a love. Stay there. Oh my God. With all my heart, I will see to honor His command. I pledge allegiance to the I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to stay there, Lord. This pain, this situation, I just want to stay there. Oh, to love, stay as a lover of God. To stay as a lover of God. To continuously seek you. Jesus. Oh, God. One more time. I pledge to the love with all my strength, with all I am. I will seek. I will stay. I will stay. I love of God. My Father, 
unbelievable glory. Let it be upon me in my situation. I will stay there wasted for God. I will stay there. I will stay there. I know I'm speaking to someone here. You came and you've come to that place where you decided, you know what, enough. I've had enough. I've waited. Now it's 2022. 2023 is looking at me. You cannot even see the blessing of the gift of life. God has carried you to the entire 2022. But you have been bombarded by issues after issues. I'm speaking to somebody. I know this by the Spirit of God. Make a choice today. You will stay there as a lover of God. You will stay there. You will stay there. You will stay there because you are about to experience unfathomable glory of God in your life. God is going to turn your life and the situation for his glory. God is going to use your situation to his glory to be seen. God is going to see the people who have loved, or loved for you now they will be laughing with you because of the glory of God that will be emitted as a lover of God. Number two. Number two. Supernatural insight and revelation. A lover of God, church, will experience a supernatural insight and revelations. I mean this. That God, like he says in the verse we read, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 9, the, uh, is it first chapter? Yeah, 2, 9 and 10. That God will ensure your life will have a supernatural understanding. You know, that insight. God releases to you uh, and the grace and believable upon your life. That in you, in you, in you and in your life, there will be so much hope and grace just because you are a lover of God. That God, because you are his lover, he makes your life to have uh, you, yourself as a person, to have a supernatural insight about him. And therefore, you will you will be there in love with God even when it's not making sense you yourself God has revealed his greatness his goodness his power in your life the supernatural insight and revelation talks about God confirming his word upon you because you've become a servant of God according to Isaiah 44 26 because of the supernatural insight and revelation God releases to you as a lover opening your eyes to see his goodness his greatness that himself he confirms his words you're uh, confirming the word of his servant. That is Isaiah 44, 26. That confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers. As a lover of God, I want to church to ex ex know that one of the things you'll begin to experience is the supernatural eyesight, the supernatural revelation of God. Every time you are able to flow with God because God opened himself into you, that you begin to have a revelation of of serving him, a revelation of understanding who exactly he is. That like I say, in a tough situation, all you see, if that is a mountain facing you, the supernatural understanding is God making you to see that mountain is still able to come down. The supernatural insight is you understanding his grace, understanding his word, understanding him as a person, that you begin to see his greatness, you begin to see his power in Imagine in your life and you begin to, 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 to be overwhelmed by him because he draws him to your, to, he, he draws you to himself and he opens your eyes to see his, him as, a, as Lord it is the Lord he is. And you begin to have this revelation which you cannot explain. The revelation of his greatness. The revelation of his faithfulness. When people are like, my God has forsaken you. You're like, forsaken? Forsaken? 
Which Bible are you reading? Every time when people are uh, like, you know what, I am I'm alone, I am what? You're like me, I'm not alone. I'm with my father. One as if he was supernatural. Eyesight is so beautiful, church. When you know God to that dimension, that level whereby you can converse with Him. One of my daughters, oh, her is in another level. Oh my goodness. Wow. Every time I talk to her, I'm like, my Lord, I'm still coming. Hallelujah. How she is in that level when she, for example, just come from Acacia, and now automatically she just have to go and rest. Immediately she gets to the bed, the, the angels tap her, tell her, no, no, it's not time to pray. I want to talk to you. And the angel begin to tell her things, what to pray, what she need to do with one, two, three things. And things begin to open. Yani, she tells me that she can tell where the angel is seated. Sometimes the chanaketigi kwa the the hand rest of the of the seat and aketiapo nanza kuonge na e ana mungilesha ana converse ana mwambia things i remember one time they were coming for, uh, she was coming from the prayer night of praying for the city of life and the angel told her hey, i want you to know what has happened as you people were praying this was going on and the other and the other i mean things yani ana ungeleshwa the other day she didn't know she was actually expectant. So she started having, uh, you know, puking and all those things what happened. And she was a bit worried. She thought she was sick in that process. And, you know, the way you are suspecting, maybe I'm pregnant, but now is it that I'm pregnant? Is it that I'm sick? The angel told her, are you worried about the baby which is growing in your womb? Why are you worried? I'm the one who was put... And she didn't even need to go for the PT test. <laughs> Angel told her, you are even, nini, but don't be worried. I'm the one who has put that baby in your womb. Don't worry. Continue to seek my face. Continue in your prayer life. Hey, so she was like, my God, which level is this? For sure I'm pregnant. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm saying a supernatural insight. God can take you to a dimension when you are a lover of God, one as if you were, that even your words, God confirm your word, with, uh, confirm your word, and perform the counsel of his messengers because of you being a true lover. Number three, a true lover of God will experience divine protection and preservation. Divine protection and preservation. Remember, we read Psalms 91 14 because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer. I'll be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I need you to notice even in trouble, God will be with you. Are you hearing me? Because sometimes when we are in trouble, we think we are alone, but a lover of God, God will be with you in, in trouble. If that house, for example, has been locked and you are being thrown out, you are being thrown out together with the Lord. He is with you in the trouble. Ah, yeah, this is too beautiful, isn't it, church? Too beautiful, my goodness. Every time I read Psalms 91, 14, it encourages me, just me, to stay there as a lover of God. Let my life forever be wasted for God because I will experience divine protection and preservation. And please, I need you to know uh, that uh, uh, time fails me to expound more on the Psalms 91, 14, 16. Can you imagine, including there is a long, long life, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Ay, it's too much, isn't it? That church, we don't need to struggle to look for other lovers. We just need to struggle to look for God. We just need to get hold of God. We just need to set our love for God. And we will see all this happening to us in Jesus mighty name the same point number four is divine di divine distinction 
Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, number four. God will, will give you a divine distinction because you are his lover. Hallelujah. You will be set above your contemporary. You will be set above your age mates. You will be set above uh, uh, the circumstances and things happening around you. You will break limits. You will break patterns. You will emerge as the winner in all circumstances because God himself make you, uh, give you distinction, gives distinction to his lovers. Number five is divine presence and divine habitation. Oh, lovers of God will experience divine presence of God like the lady I've just talked to you about. She's a true lover of God. And can you imagine God chooses to dine with her, talk to her, converse with her through his angel. Wow, amazing. And God sends his angel just to minister to this girl, speak to her, and we notice that uh, one of the things this girl was talking to us, this lady, is that the accurate information, like I remember when we were doing the, the where is, Nyamira crusade, we had planned, every plan was in place, we are going to Nyamira. And because her heart is set into praying, she's a true intercessor of this ministry. And when she began to pray, can you imagine, the Lord tells her, don't pray for your father uh, to go to Nyamira. Pray she's go he is going to Kisi. And he is conversing with the angel. I, no. The, the announcement, even I heard clearly, we are going for the crusade in Nyamira. The angel tells, didn't, didn't tell her what is happening. You pray, your father is going to Kisi. And do you know the team which went there for advance? There were other challenges which happened that we had to shift the crusade from Nyamira to Kisi as the last result. Last minute, we went to Kisi. And it was not in our program. So when she came and began to talk to us and tell us, Dad, God is speaking to me that you're not going to Nyamira, you're going to Kisi. Of course, at that point, we were still pursuing Nyamira crusade. You know, the grounds and all that. So last minute when we moved to Kisi, wah, we were like, oh Lord, this is too amazing. I want to say this, church. Lovers, you will have divine presence, divine habitation with the Lord himself. John 14, 23. John 14, 23. God loves living around his lovers. Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. We will come. We will. Notice we will. Have you seen that? Come to him and make our home with him. Hey. This is a trinity because we also know the Holy Spirit is in the picture. The trinity of God's head dwelling with you in, and make home with him. Oh, lo, lo, lo. Please, let's stay there, church, as lovers of God. Hang there, because you will experience divine presence and divine habitation. Number six, divine provision. You will never live to no dry season in your life. Because now, how can God said, dwell with you and have a need? How? How? Will you have... Will you not experience provision like automatically if the Lord is there? I will not delve into that, but just know a lover of God will experience divine provision. And we have seen that already as a church. Every time we have planned for the crusade, we don't even uh, look at individuals. There is no day you will hear an accountant in this house or the admin of this house calling you. It's now we have a crusade. We need this to come through. We look at God and we have seen God commanding people. Commanding people. People have been commanded to give immensely. It even overwhelms us. Hey! Just because we are loving God through soul winning venture. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember last week on Wednesday, just before we went for the crusade, our car got something, uh, one of the mirrors in the process of uh, parking or something, 
came out. There's a small mirror beside the main one in our car. And daddy was like, ah, that's a small thing. At least it's not the main. We can just move on. But the moment I, he just told me to call someone to find out whether it can actually have a quick fix because it was around 2, two and we were living with the car that following day. He said, maybe they can find it or anyway. It wasn't a big deal. But he says, there is a car when it has a small dent, it really, you know. So long story short, quickly, the person I called, it's like a one call led to another call, to another call. The next thing, the car was fixed in a quick succession. Before we know it, another car was in our house. We were given another car, just like you, mom and dad, you cannot go with this car like this. It's a small dent, it's a small thing, but no, 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 no. There's a waiting car for you. Like, Lord... This one is too amazing. In fact, at some point, dad was like, wow, baby, this one is too much. Too much workings of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it's just one person I called and was like, no, no, we must get another kind place and the other. Number eight, access to grace. Divine grace. Ephesians 6, 24. I mean, you access grace in a beautiful grace be with you. All those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Lovers of God will access grace. Lovers of God will access grace. You know, grace is what in your own ability you cannot do. The grace will do for you. Cindy, you don't even deserve it. Grace will come in the picture. Yourself, you know yourself. With what you have, this and the other. But when grace steps in the picture of your life, it takes over. Amen. Lastly, supernatural release of resources. I think it's a copy-paste of divine provision in Jesus' mighty name. Let's all be upstanding.